Hello, this is Kei from Japan, and thank you for coming to watch my other video. Today, I will introduce another important concept in forex trading. It's called max volatility. I got this concept when I was studying forex from a Japanese fund manager in Japan, and I don't think it's really common outside of Japan, like Tokyo Box strategy, but it's very powerful, so I decided to share it with you today. You know, every day the market is moving up and down, but in general, the maximum size of volatility tends to be about the same within a certain range depending on a currency pair. And today, I will tell you the most simple way to find it out from a chart and how you can actually trade with that concept. But before we move on, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't so that you get notifications for my future Forex videos. And if you are already excited to watch this video, please press a good button too. So, let's begin! Okay, so what I mean by volatility is that I'm talking about the volatility within a day. And as you know, on each currency pair, the volatility is different. And on each day, it's different too. Like when there's a economic news or fundamentals, it moves big. But when there's no significant news in the market, the price tends to move within our same range of volatility. So here I took one hour real moving chart of USDJPY. And here on this chart, as you can see, the days are divided by these vertical lines. And how I check the volatility is, you take a measurement tool that I think it's installed in all the platforms, and I check the pips of the highest and lowest of the candles within a day. Let me show you. I take the tool and starting from the very left on the 20th of August, if you drag it from the top of the candle and to the very bottom of the candle on this day, it shows 52 pips here. So on this day, the max volatility was 52 pips, right? Moving on to the next day, the max volatility on this day was like 42 pips. Okay, then the next day on the 22nd, hold on, Let's see, it's like 40 pips on this day. So you can see that the, the volatility limit the max volatility was in between 52 to 40 pips between 20th and 22nd of August on this particular pair. Well, you can actually take the daily chart and measure each candles, but I prefer to do it on one hour because you can measure it more precisely. This actually tells you a lot. For example, when you open a chart and measure the max volatility of the past few days, and let's say you find it like 50 pips. And let's say the current price level is just moved like 10 pips downwards since the day started. Then that means there's a potential 40 pips to keep on moving downwards or potential 60 pips to move upwards so that you can expect how far the price could extend within the day and where the initial target can be on that day. However, as you see on this chart, when there is a significant news in the market, it doesn't work because it's obvious that the volatility is much bigger than any other days on that day. So check the economic calendar and watch the news, and whenever there's some significant events, don't trade with this strategy. Okay, so moving on to the day after the news, when you look at this day on the 27th of August, the max volatility was um, 55 pips on this day. Oh, by the way, um, before and after the news, the average volatility can be changed. Usually, right before the important news, the volatility tends to be shrinking down. And after the news, it tends to be big initially and gets smaller as time goes by. So on the 27th, it was like 55 pips. And on the next day, it was like 56 or 57 pips almost. All right, and let's see how many pips it's moving today so far. Let's see, currently the price is at 52 pips above from the lowest price. So that means statistically, the current price level is near the max volatility in a day. So we can see that the price could go further up like only four pips, then go backwards. So that determines this is a good selling point. But this alone cannot be the confirmation because you need to check the market along with other tools like indicators and lines and so on. So when I look at a chart, first of all to me, this is in a range between this recent highest 
and this recent lowest level. And the price is right in between these lines. So until the price breaks on either direction, I see it's in a range consolidation. So the price could go either direction from this price level. Then if you look at the Bollinger Bands, the current price level is touching on the deviation too. So that means the uptrend is quite strong, but it might go backwards from here. Also, I see a horizontal line here. So this is another reason the price could go backwards from the current price level. So with that being said, let me place a sell here. Hold on. And this is like a test trade, you know, for you to see the exciting live trading. So I just go for a small lot sizing for you to be able to see the outcome and place the stop loss right above the recent highest level. All right. You know, like I said on my previous video, when it comes to forex trading and technical analysis, I don't like to explain things from the past chart because you can say anything about it. You know, to me, it's like giving you the questions and answers and asking you to take the test. Then, of course, you get 100 scores, right? But in real trade, it's different. It's like a mile ahead is complete darkness, and even if you have the answers from the past test, in real trade, 1 plus 1 can be sometimes 10 or sometimes 0. So, I don't say it's meaningless to learn from the past chart. You know, of course, it's important to know the form in martial arts, but I'm just saying it's different in a real fight. And I know that because I'm an individual trader and I live by this trading only. So that's why most of the videos I record are based on live trades and I take positions while recording so that you know how to judge things that are unknown in the future. So anyways, I just place sell here and see how it's gonna turn out. And while waiting, let's check the max volatility on other pairs. Alright, this is euro data on one hour time frame. So like I did earlier, let's measure the max volatility on each day. Alright, let's just start from the 19th of August. And this is like 37 pips on this day. Pretty small volatility on this day. How about the next day on the 20th? It's like 41 pips. Almost like 42 pips. And on the 21st, it's like 27 pips. And on the next day, on the 22nd, it's like 49 pips. I think this movement right here was something related to a news. All right, let's just skip these two days and check on the 27th. It's like um, 30 pips on this day. Then on the 28th, the max volatility is like uh, 24 pips. A pretty small volatility on this day. So what about today? Let's see, it's just like, um, hold on, it's like just like uh, 70, 17 pips from the top of the day. So that indicates the price could go further down, like for 10 or 12 pips. Or if there's some significant support here, and if the price is to be supported by this level, it could move like 17 plus 25 is like 42 pips upwards from the current price level. But make sure if there's no significant news uh, related to this pair on this day. This is the 15 minute chart after one hour. I actually placed sell here and looks like it's not really moving much, so I will see how it goes later. Right now, it looks like it's been resisted here twice, but if the price appears to be strong bullish and goes over this line, I will just cut loss. So let me wrap up what I said today. First, the volatility within a day is usually limited in average, so if you measure the max volatility on each day, you kind of know how much further the price will extend or not and you can use it as a target. However, secondly, don't use this strategy when there's a major economic news uh, related to that pair because it moves much more than usual volatility and it could risk your account. Third, this is something I didn't mention 
but um, before and after the economic news, the max volatility could be changed because the positions and orders of the traders will change. So after the volatile day, don't take the max volatility before the news, but only take them afterwards so that you have more reliable stats. All right, thank you for watching the video. If you thought this video is helpful, please press the good button and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload the new Forex videos. Alright, stay gold! Matane! Bye!